here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. On the third day of our wedding at Cana in Galilee, the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When we ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. There were five, six, six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 pounds. Gallons. Gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now take some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, he did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called to the groom and said, everyone serves the good wine first. And when the people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you, you have kept the good wine until now. This was a sign from God. Jesus manifested his glory and the disciples believed in him. Jesus was at Bethany, he came and reclined at the table of Simon the leper. While Jesus was reclining at the table, I came with an alabaster flask of ointment, a pure nard, which was worth a lot of money. And I broke the flask and poured it over Jesus' head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded me. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. And then he said, For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. Jesus said, Truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. call me Matthew, and I have also encountered Jesus. Jesus saw me sitting at the tax booth, clearly understanding I was a tax collector, yet he came directly to me, and he said to me, follow me. So I left, I rose up, and followed him. Then I gave him the best feast I could in my house, and there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with us, and their scribes and the Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Yeah, my experience with Jesus was similar. 
Uh, I am Zacchaeus and I was a chief tax collector and it made me a lot of money. Oh, I see. <laughs> but as Jesus entered through Jericho, I wanted to see him, but on account of the crowd, I couldn't because after all, I'm not very tall and I couldn't see him. <laughs> oh. um, so I ran ahead and I climbed up into a tree uh, to see him and he was about to walk that way and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to me, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. So I hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Mm. And I stood and said to the Lord, behold, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to me, today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. Mm. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been killed, he departed by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when I and the multitudes I was with heard this, we followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for us and healed the sick among us. When it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. Then he commanded all of us to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitudes. So we all ate and were filled, and they took up the twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides all the women and children. same day that we were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. We were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As we talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up to us, but we were kept from recognizing him. He asked us, what are you discussing together as you walk along? We stood still, our faces were downcast. My friend, Cleopas, he asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that has happened here in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth, we were saying. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He then said to us, how foolish are you? And how slow to believe that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to us what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As we approached, 
the village to where we were going, Jesus continued on as if we were going further. But we urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with us. When he was at the table with us, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and began to give it to us. Then our eyes were opened and we recognized him and he disappeared before our eyes. And we asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we talked with us and opened the scriptures to us? So we got up, returned right away to Jerusalem. We found the 11 and those with them assembled together. We said, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then we told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. I was with Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and a couple other disciples. They asked me, Peter, where are you going? I'm going out to fish. And they said, we'll go with you. So we went out, got into the boat, but that night we caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but we did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to us, friends, haven't you any fish? No. The man said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When we did, we were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to me, it is the Lord. As soon as I heard him say, it is the Lord, I wrapped my outer garment around me and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish. For we were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When we landed, we saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So I climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. With so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to us, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to us after he was raised from the dead. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty pearls of thunder crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says 
to the churches. Amen.